We're here at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh down in the ultralight area. Came by to look at some pretty little airplanes that I've admired for many, many years. This is the Ultra Cruiser line, but that doesn't really cover it all. It's the Cruiser line, sure, I guess would be the sure. better term. And Terry from Hummel Aviation is going to tell us a thing or two about these airplanes. Let's sure. start with this pretty little one right here. Sure. This is just a gorgeous, looks kind of like a little fighter yeah, aircraft. Yeah, it is. It is. This is this is an example, I guess, of the Hummelbird, Maury's first design goes back to 1979, 1980 when he first flew it. Uh, as an experimental amateur built, kind of modeled after the Watson Wind Wagon is what he started with the plans and thought he could improve it a little bit. So that's that's where the origin of the of the Hummelbird came from. Uh, half Volkswagen engine uh, on the on the Hummelbird, 37 horse to 45 horse. This is a 37 horse. Uh, Cruise 110 miles an hour, obviously 61 miles per gallon is what we get coming to Oshkosh. <laughs> okay, so. I see there. <laughs> 61 so. miles per gallon. Just try that in your automobile. <laughs> but it's certainly a personal airplane. Uh, Maury was 5'9", 130 pounds, and he fit just right. So if you're anything <laughs> over that, it's going to be snug. We've we've adjusted things a little bit over the Well, you know, it looks fairly roomy in there, actually. I'm not yeah. a real big you, guy. Fit. Yeah, you would fit fine. Yeah, we've actually both side rails and made a little more room in the cockpit than Maury's original design. Yeah. The engine is something that's in your space as well, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Scott Kasser from Hummel Engines. Maury split the engine business about 20 years ago from the aircraft business. Took over by Scott Kassler at Hummel Engines. He's so Maury used to do it all. He used to do it all. Hummel yeah. was just one thing yep, then. Yep. Now it's Hummel Air a Aviation a and Hummel Aircraft Hummel Engines. engines. Okay. Yeah, Hummel okay. Engines. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about how this particular airplane flies. What the pilot experience sure, is. Sure, sure. Uh, we call this our little pocket rocket. It's. I don't believe Maury thought this, this was a first time airplane for everybody. Because it was his baby. Uh, uh, I feel as a novice pilot as I am that it's a pretty quick little airplane. Um, re quick, responsive, quick in, quick responsive. in response yeah, and handling yeah, quality. Yeah, very true, very straightforward. Uh, you know, a lot of ground effect. Uh, guys thinking, well, you get this little airplane down the ground, it's going to land. This low wing is only about a foot off the ground when it's in ground effect, so it'll float a long time. Yeah. Uh, this actually has a Harry Riblet airfoil. We've kind of leaning towards making this a standard airfoil. It's a little more forgiving. The brake is the okay. stall brake isn't as sharp. Okay. With the with the riblet airfoil. So, uh, but you know, 110 miles an hour on 1.7 gallons an hour, and <laughs> it's a it's a it's a great little that's airplane. Quite a, that's quite a number yeah, set there. It is. Well, absolutely. let's talk about some of the other aircraft in the line. Sure, First of all, sure. review the whole line for me, Terry. Yeah, it started with the uh, with the Hummelbird, and then. Uh, when Maury lost his medical in around 1985, he started flying Minimaxes. He was a team dealer for a long time. Uh, had an incident in a Minimax and was hurt pretty badly. Through that recovery, he knew that if he'd have been in a metal airplane, ultralight, that he wouldn't have been hurt so badly. So he was determined to develop an, ultra, an all metal ultralight. We had a really good AV, uh, aeronautical engineer by the name of Dick Screeter, who was a really good friend of his. Dick was a glider champion back through the middle 70s or so, super engineer. So they came up with an airfoil that they were determined would, would could be legal, could be built as an ultralight. So they started working together. Maury had all the plan for him in his head. He just needed a good wing. And Dick came up with that with through the riblet airfoil, GA30-618. Um, and Moore was real close. When I took over in 2003, there were maybe a dozen airplanes being built. Uh, and they were probably going to come out a few pounds heavy. Okay. Uh, Maury's was legal, but Maury's... Legal 103. Legal 103, okay. part 103, uh, weight, speed, uh, the whole nine yards. But then when he went to put it on paper, he added a few things to be safe, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, the first airplanes built were about 10 pounds heavy. And we spent the first two years kind of refining that back a little bit to what we have today uh, is, is the Ultra Cruiser. It's uh, Okay, and that's what we're looking at over correct, here, uh, out, slightly out of the camera's view sure, now, but uh, sure. uh, but that one is the one that can qualify as a Part as 103 airplane. a Part aircraft. 103 airplane. Uh, we built that from our kit. The Hummelbird is not available in a complete kit. We have a lot of components, a builder's package, if you will. But the Ultra Cruiser, we actually have a 
pre-punched, all the things welded for them, spars pre-assembled for you. Uh, pretty much a Clico together project. And build time from our kit, we built this one in 230 hours. We've done a bunch of them, so that's not fair. Uh, I would say, though, realistically, 400 hours to 450 hours okay. to, to assemble the kit. Europe has now got a class they call 120 kilogram class, Correct. which is almost the same. It's yep. about 10 pounds more than yep. ours. Yep. But exactly. have you had any? Because you already have an intriguing, well-produced airplane. Have you got interest in Europe? Yeah, we that? have. We've been working for about the last year with a group of gentlemen from uh, Germany. I thought it was our 103 rules over there. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, for them to fly it over there, it has to go through what we would almost be like our ASTM standards. For, right. For, it's a pretty thorough it is, requirement it is. they put on it. Okay. They did all the testing and uh, they've. we've had to re-engineer two things. The landing gear, when they dropped it from seven feet at gross, the landing gear bent. From I, seven I, feet. I could have told them that was going to happen. Uh, that's pretty high. <laughs> a lot of times we hear about this in inches, not yeah, seven exactly, feet. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's a pretty good stress test they, they put it through. They call it a decelerated drop, which I don't know <laughs> all the details of that, but but it, it bent, and I would have expected that. So they're going to change the landing gear, and they use the same control surface pressures on every airplane. So we had to stand up to what, like a Cessna would or something like okay. that. Okay. So our linkage wasn't strong enough, right in the stick. Everything else outboard was. So they got to redesign the stick and the landing gear, and that's been done. They've got that completed, and they're ready to go to Friedrichshafen in, in April and start selling kits. So next year when I go to that show, which I love going to, yeah. I'll see I think you will. Yeah. the Ultra Cruiser there. All right, very good. Uh, did we miss any of your aircraft product line that we should be well, talking the H5 about, Terry? was developed, I came along in uh, 2003 and Maury told me I was too fat to fly any of his airplanes. <laughs> I said, by Maury, I love him, what are we going to do? And he said, well, we're going to design another one. So beautiful. we took the Ultra Cruiser because it's super flight characteristics, super docile to fly, and built that into our H5. Unlike uh, the Hummelbird. Correct. correct. And this one's yeah. a, that one's a real easy flying guy. Okay. Super super easy. A very. I've had Cub guys tell me they like it better than a Cub. So wow. That, that, okay. That There's a strong a endorsement. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Exactly. But the H5, we wanted uh, just something that bigger guys like me could get into. Uh, end numbered. You know, having a license was okay. I wasn't concerned about that. And uh, he helped me with that. We just it's just a beefed up Alta Cruiser, um, four cylinder power stronger wing 850 pound gross versus 575 cockpits a little bigger wider uh, taller uh, we, we, we've got a mock-up in our booth which we've had I don't know how many people through it but well, guys I thought that's a really good idea yeah. people want to get in yeah. them but if they if you let them in these airplanes they'll and I don't know catch these something two, yeah. on them and they'll you know <laughs> yeah. things happen in other words yeah I'm so that's a great idea to have let that. us put airplane their airplanes in our booth so we, we built this mock-up from again kit parts h5 kit parts and uh, uh, I see a guy standing there that's 6'4 and 300 pounds, and I'll say, well, why don't you climb it? Oh, I don't fit in any of these. I said, you know, put a dollar on there, and I'll bet you that <laughs> you're going to fit. And it's wonderful. So you want a few dollars this yeah, weekend. <laughs> I, yeah. So, so it's, it's good. I, I encourage anybody to come by, either Hummel Aviation in, in our shop, uh, at home, uh, here at the booth. You know, we'll probably be at Sun and Fun this year again. So. If you think you don't fit, come by. I, I think we got something that'll 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 fit you. But the H5. And where, where are you located, Terry? We're in Northwest Ohio at the Williams County Airport, uh, right on the airport. Uh, Zero Golf Six is the identifier. Uh, Bryan, Ohio, is the local town that we're that we're near there. Um, shops always open. We encourage builders to if they whatever they're doing, they're starting from scratch. Come in and we'll get them started. If they're building kits, come in and we'll get them started. Uh, camp in the front yard, whatever you can do. I don't charge for that. Now, if I got people lined up and I got to hire people to do that, it might be a different story. But right now, I have people come in on weekends and things and, and just And you can help get them going. going and then they sure. take the package home and uh, complete all the project. Confidence. It's all, a lot of people haven't worked with metal. They find out it's not as difficult as they, especially from a kit. Every, they just need to understand how to deburr and clico and drill and and they're on their way. So the kit does not require extensive jigging and so forth. None. You can do it in a garage, can you? Or, or some workspace Absolutely. anyway that will the center work. Center section winds up about seven feet wide. It will not go through a single three-foot door in your in your basement or your home. Uh, so uh, we encourage people when they get ready to put the center section through that it needs to be in a garage or somebody. And some of the six-foot door will work. So uh, great. But up to that point, it's not an issue for them. Okay. So if I said, you know what, I'm convinced. Uh, 
how long would it take you to get me a fully built ultra cruiser? If I said, here's the money, right Come today? Buy the shop that, that one's on the shelf. Yeah, okay, well, okay, but another but one. But there's only one of them. Yeah, right. So that one's gone. Let's say you sold that one. And now I say, but i got to have one, too. About How long three to four weeks. Oh, really? About okay, three to very four fast. Because then. i got a local guy who laser cuts for us. It takes me about a week to process those laser parts into a kit. Uh, welded parts we keep on the shelf and all those kind of things. So, okay. So, so it's very a pretty fast. Quick, it's a pretty quick turnaround. Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Where can we find out some more? I've asked you all the questions I can think of, but you know sure. what? People have always got more. Where do we find you on the sure. web? And we'll put it up on the screen for you. Yeah, us. our website is uh, flyhumble.com, F L Y H U M M E L.com. Uh, we've got a YouTube uh, channel. We just started with some things. We put some assembly information for our kit on the H5 kit, uh, showed some videos, which has been a real success for us so yeah uh, call us up i'll be the guy that answers the phone all right terry <laughs> well we're glad to have you on the other end of the line we're glad you're here at oshkosh for us uh, you can find more about these aircraft and lots of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com thanks for joining terry hallett and myself here at air venture oshkosh down in the ultralight area thank you dan <laughs>